Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or simply hoping to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about an article from The Atlantic entitled Masters of Love. That's just a quick, short title. Well, two things. If it's from The Atlantic, it's going to be long. That's true. But this because is a long they, article. Do a, they do a thorough, they're excellent, mm-hmm. really good uh, journalism, r- literature coming out of this magazine. But they are long because they're complete treatments. Right. And uh, the title sort of threw me, but you'll find out what they mean by masters of love mm-hmm. as we go through. So pay attention to this concept, this idea of masters of love. Right. And I, and I, what I like about this article, and, and this is just kind of getting right to it, is I, I like that we talk about these, the, the main key to a healthy relationship being kindness. Right. Right. Because it, you, you kind of alluded to it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea of, of finding that thing to push the other person's buttons and right, to just triggers find that, that thing that triggers mm-hmm. them off. Um, but this article kind of supports that, the idea of, n- no, we need to be kind to each other. Mm-hmm. If we want mm-hmm. a relationship to last, we, we have to be kind to each other. Right. There's a, there, this article is just, just absolutely loaded with um, useful information. And it begins with some interesting statistics. Yeah. Um, we're, we're talking this week about love because it's uh, we're preparing for um, next Wednesday, which is Valentine's Day. Right. Okay. So we thought, well, this would be a good week to talk about love and relationships mm-hmm. and get, get some perspective. And uh, we discovered that 13,000 people, mm-hmm. 13,000 couples, American couples. Mm-hmm. will do what? Get married Say I do. in June. Each day in June. Yeah. Okay. Every day in June. 13,000 people get married. Right, which is phenomenal to but me. Not 13,000 people, 13,000 13, couples. couples. Right. So that's 26,000 people. Right, right? Right. And so June is the month, uh, June is, what do they call it? June is bridal month or marriage right, month, right, whatever right, they call it. Like mm-hmm. Anyway, June, June, the June bride, right. that's what it is. Okay, that each day in June, 13,000 couples get mm-hmm. married. And of those 13,000 couples, three out of 10 will end up in a healthy relationship. Yeah. Okay. So that makes you stop in your tracks. Yeah. Right. That only three out of 10. Um, and that's true for the county that we live in. The mm-hmm. divorce rate in our county hovers right. between 60 and 70%. Right. Okay. Which uh, surprised me the first time I heard that that right. number. Um, but, it, but it shouldn't because right. in fact, three out of 10 have healthy relationships. So the article then goes on to talk about why are some healthy and some not healthy. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, okay. absolutely, and and it gets the the article the, the author is um, what was that person Emily Emily, Emily Smith, <laughs> and thank you Emily for having a name that we can pronounce not, without hesitation. She does have her middle name listed there, but and I just skipped right you, past that one you because just slid right by that. Emily one. and Smith are very easy, right. but that the middle name E S F A H A N I S Fahani and. Yes, and so That's we don't want to we don't want to mispronounce that, so we skipped it. But she, she's the author of the article, but she talks about the work right of a well known psychologist of uh, John Gottman, right? And, and, and John and Julie Gottman, yeah, yeah. They they work. have a um, <clears throat> I get their emails all the time <clears throat> about about their marriage seminars, and because right. they they do national trainings mm-hmm. for not not just for professionals for following their, their system and their, their approach to right. dealing with mm-hmm. uh, relationships, but, you know, also for relation for couples. Right. That's right. That they, they do both. They right. talk to couples directly and they train others right. in this technique. Right. So they, so they, but they've been doing this for a long time since the eighties, right. yeah. the mid eighties. And so they've been looking at what, what constitutes a healthy relationship mm-hmm. and what constitute, uh, factors that's going to help a marriage maintain. Right. Um, and, and so, you know, again, uh, Emily talks about their approach uh, here right. in this article. Right. Um, in, interesting approach. They do um, um, physiologic right. re- uh, responses. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so their their original research was they hooked people up and measured galvanic skin response mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. heartbeat and respiration and all that to measure your level of arousal. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what they were interested in knowing. And they divided the couples 
into two groups. Right. Low arousal and high arousal. Right. Okay. Go ahead and explain low arousal, high arousal. Well, <clears throat> b- before we do that, the the there was another couple that looked at some of these same mm-hmm. things, but they were more uh, primarily focused on the the intimate relationship uh, back in the I think it was the seventies, mm-hmm. uh, Masters and Johnson. Right. You know they right. did some of their early work. In, in looking at this, and it's that's right. Th- there's a lot of overlap here, mm-hmm. um, and but they were looking at the intimacy uh, parts of the relationship, and right. and so the Gottmans kind of expanded that, and now they're looking at the relationship aspect. That's right, that's right. And so they hooked these couples up. They would put them in a room right. and watch them interact, but they would hook them up to these various machines that would measure mm-hmm. their level of arousal. Mm-hmm. And I hope I get this summary correct. What they did is based on heartbeat and and uh, uh, skin conduction and these other measures of physiologic arousal, they learned that um, some um, members of some couples um, had very low levels of arousal and some had much higher levels of arousal. Right. And then they went back and studied them years later, right. several, like six or eight years later, they went back and studied the couples to see what their status was. And they discovered that the low arousal couples uh, we're still together and doing right. well. But the high arousal couples um, were in troubled, dysfunctional, or uh, relationships divorce. that had ended. Right. Okay, divorce. Yeah. And so they said, okay, what's the connection here? Right. And the connection here is that people who are comfortable, mm-hmm. at ease, uh, um, trusting in their relationship, they have very low level of arousal. Mm-hmm. But people who are on guard, mm-hmm. who feel the need to defend themselves, who maybe are on the attack themselves, have a higher level of arousal and may not even realize it. Right. We, we, don't, we don't realize yeah. that we're doing it, but we are on guard, we're on, and we, we, we get this physiologic response that moves us toward fight or flight. Mm-hmm. And the couples that had low arousal were doing well, they called them masters, masters, mm-hmm. and the couples that weren't, they called disasters. Right. So the title of this article is "Masters of Love," right. and what he's talking about are the successful couples. Right. Yeah, I, I love the example that they use where <clears throat> they said that a you know one of the disasters, a couple from the you know the high arousal uh, mm-hmm. couples, that the husband might say to the wife, "Why don't you tell me about your day?" It's not right. going to take very long, anyways. Right. You know, right. like th- there's that almost. Uh, confrontational, that uh, like again defensive right. type of uh, tone mm-hmm. to it. Whereas the the masters, they're very comfortable with each other. Right. They're very connected to each other, and so they're mm-hmm. patient and and right. connected in that way. And one of the one of the wonderful terms that I will use probably every day in my practice is the word bids. B i d s. He said one of the things that the that the couples do is they will. Um, they will uh, say something to the partner, and it, they refer to it as a bid, right. as in as in gambling. And um, they the the partner might say, "Hey, guess what happened today at mm-hmm. work?" Or, "Hey, take a look at this." And they said that's not just conversation; that's also an effort to say. I want to connect with you. Mm -hmm. It's a bid to say, I want to connect with you. I want to be closer to you. It's an effort to get closer to the other partner. They call that a bid. And how you respond to the bid becomes um, a functional part of the relationship. Right. Okay. Right. Absolutely. And then the, the, the author kind of go ahead. Oh, it's go ahead because it's turn away or turn two. Right. 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 And, and as, as they, as they're progressing through this, you know, the, 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 the shift then becomes, you know, it, the author talks about this idea of contempt and that when we have these bids, we have these, um, these, these throwing the line out to, to try to make the connection, to try to create That's that. Right. And you, either the person is going to turn away and right. not engage, or they're going to turn towards and they're going to engage. That's right. You tell, like, for example, I come into your office and say, hey, take a look at this. Mm-hmm. You, you have something on the computer screen. I'm either going to turn to right. and attend, or I'm going to turn away. Right. Okay. Um, masters turn to more often than um, disasters. Right. And, and so, and the more that you turn away, mm-hmm. you start to develop this sense of contempt, contempt. with one right. another. And that they say produced, that right. contempt is the number one mm-hmm. pr- 
problem, the number one poison for right. relationship. That's right. Contempt is the becomes the problem. Right. Right. And and, and contempt will, will tear couples apart because right. then you know the other person's not interested, they're not engaging. Mm -hmm. And and at some point mm -hmm. the person who keeps throwing the line out right. is going to stop throwing the line out. That's right. Two things happen. If you develop contempt, and, and, and I think that's probably an okay word to use. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, that I I probably I agree with the use of the word contempt. It's not that you're contemptuous openly, but you just don't have enough concern for the other person. Right. Okay. So the person who turns away, the person who develops contempt, first of all, you miss, and I don't know how they derive it at derived this number, but they said you miss 50%, mm -hmm. or you miss about half of the positive things right. that your partner's doing. Yeah. And the other problem is, is that you don't have any reason to keep bidding. Right. Like you right. said, you you stop casting the line right. out. Okay. You stop offering bids because with the the bids don't get if nobody does anything with them, then you stop doing it. Right. Okay. And so now you become I think what they were saying here is you become vulnerable right. um, to, to other things. Right. Mm -hmm. And and you know, and, and tying this back to the key of kindness that we right. were talking about right. earlier. The the idea is that when when a couple turns towards or when the other mm -hmm. person turns towards, mm -hmm. you know, they may not be completely interested. They may they may have something else to do. Right. They may have something else going on, That's but weird. they're putting forth the effort. And and one of the things that they talk about is that that effort should be recognized. That effort should be acknowledged. acknowledged. Exactly. Because even if you're running late to dinner, even mm -hmm. if you're, uh, you know, and, and they put running late to dinner again. As usual. Right. Again. Mm -hmm. and, and even if they, you know, aren't doing everything exactly the way that you want them, want them to, mm -hmm. If the effort is there, if they're they're working on it, they're trying. Okay. You need to pay attention to that because, as you said, those that attempt is often overlooked. That's right. And yeah. and we we ignore that and then oh, late again. Yeah, you're late, but at least you tried. Right. That's the fifty percent that right. they're talking about. Is right. That, is you're only seeing half of it. Right. The contempt comes when <clears throat> they're late and they don't care that they're late. Right. They That's don't. Right. They, they they don't come in saying, "I'm so sorry, I'm late. I got caught up. This happened. Mm -hmm. That happened." Right. No, they're late and. You know, right. all right. You know, right. just move on. Right. That's you know, right. Why, why, why isn't dinner warm? Mm -hmm. You know, right. um, and and so you have to show, show that genuine interest. Um, that that those attempts have to be recognized. Mm -hmm. And the other piece is the idea of um, that that when that genuine interest is there, the idea of even if they're not executing everything exactly right, mm -hmm. even if they don't do it exactly the way that you want them to, whatever it is, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, the way that they, uh, it could be something as mundane as the way that they cook something, mm -hmm. or it could, but it could right. be something more, uh, more significant as in mm -hmm. the way that they, um, you know, comfort you when you're, when you're stressed. Right. Even if they're not doing something exactly right, mm -hmm we need to make sure that we are appreciating the intent and the, right. and the, the, um, the, what they're trying to do. That's right. That's and, right. and when, once contempt creeps in there, mm -hmm. you're not able to do that anymore. And what and that's we, the big, big right. problem. And when we work with couples, we hear it all the time that what, what people complain about, he doesn't acknowledge anything I do. Right. She never acknowledges the positive things right. that I do. It's right. always negative. No matter what right. I do, it's negative. That's what people complain about in yeah. relationships is exactly. you're not acknowledging what I'm doing. Right. Um, no matter how hard I work, you mm -hmm. never say anything. If I don't clean the house, you complain. If I do clean the house, I don't hear about it. You know, right. it's like this expectation. Right. That's what couples complain about. Exactly right. what they're talking about here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so we'll end with these, these four, yeah. um, these four responses, right? Yeah, because if you turn, if the, your response to your partner's bids, mm -hmm. okay, your partner tries to talk to you, right? And your response falls into one of four right. categories, right? So there's the first, there's two that are destructive, right? And two that are constructive, right? So the, in uh, passive or active. So passive destructive, is um, is sort of shifting uh, and ignoring what the other person is trying to do, right. um, or 
wanting to engage you with by talking about yourself or talking about something else. So well, yeah, that's interesting. But yeah. hey, can I show you something? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but you won't believe what happened to me today. Mm-hmm. Right. You know right. that that shift in like what you have to say isn't really mm-hmm. important, but what I have to say that's right. really important. But the passive destruction is you just you're just not engaged. You right. don't you don't bring attention. You don't bring engagement. And again, couples complain about this all the time. Right. But, well, my husband gets home and I want to talk to him about something, but he's just not interested. He doesn't seem to be interested. Right. That's passive destructive. Right. Active destructive is, as the name implies, um, somebody you know she. Your your spouse brings something to you, mm-hmm. and then you're responsible. Well, that was kind of stupid. That was sort right. of a dumb thing to do. It's much more overt. Right. It's, right. It's more. It's, it's an act of destructiveness. Yeah. That that passive is is subtle. It, it's um, not so overt. It's covert. Yeah. It's it's sly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 I think that it's important to recognize that sometimes that happens, and you're not even aware that it's happening. Right. Right. Because if you're not really interested in something, you don't necessarily say, oh my gosh, I don't, I'm not interested in that at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Let me throw something else out there. Or let me try something else. Right. Let me, mm-hmm. you know, passively right. uh, adjust. We don't usually think that way, right. but it happens. So, so passive um, destruction and active destruction. Mm-hmm. Active destruction is much more, more overt. But then we have the more positive side of things. Right. We have positive uh, or, or passive, sorry, passive, right. constructive, and right. active Mm-hmm. Uh, constructive right yeah so so the passive constructive it is it's acknowledged and and um and it's understood in in mm-hmm. a way it's and it's but it's not as overt again right you but at least you're maintaining you 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 maintain eye contact and you right. listen attentively and you don't make a big fuss over it but you know that the other person is listening to you and accepting what you're saying right so so your your significant other says um you won't believe what happened today mm-hmm. um yada 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 happened and the other person says listens you know shows right. shows genuine mm-hmm. in, in interest and everything right. That's cool. Right, right. That's it. That's fantastic. Oh, finally it happened. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's passive because it's not, you're not repeating back to them what they right. said. You're not engaging them mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. in an active right. exchange. So it's it, that's what's considered more passive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So obviously the more active constructive is, right. you know, really engaging in that conversation. That's right. Now you now you become part of it. Now right. you, you match their enthusiasm right. and you match their intensity and you right. match their interest. Okay? Right. And so, um, but you can see that when they, they talk about them as destruct, there's mm-hmm. the masters and the destructor, mm-hmm. the destroyers. And um, so these are ways to um, express Right. Your kindness and kindness is concern mm-hmm. um, and, and engagement with the other person. Right. Mm-hmm. So when somebody throws out the bids, right, you're going to respond in one of four ways. Right. And um, um, you need to think you need to think about these four. And how are you responding to your partner? Because right. people who respond in constructive ways mm-hmm. have healthy relationships. That right. was the other thing they discovered. Right. They watched people. Yeah, uh, responding to each other, yeah. and they came up with these four categories. So right. That was ingenious, fabulous research. That yeah. Doing. So, so check out this article. <clears throat> but the the take home is, you know, when you're when you're in your, in a relationship, you want mm-hmm. to think about, um, are you going to be a master or are you going to be a disaster? Are right. you going to engage and and be connected mm-hmm. and be in, involved? Um, are or are you going to be uh, defensive and avoidant and and um, anxious right. about the relationship. You know, are, how are you going to respond to these bids, and, and are you going to develop a sense of contentment yeah. from the other person? And we say, I say all that with a cell phone in mind because yeah. that's become part of this problem. Is that people, you know, you're trying to talk to your partner and they're looking at their cell phone. Right. Okay? That's passive destruction right. right so be mindful yeah be mindful exactly mm-hmm. and right. not just on february 14th that's true be mindful every day every day that's it for today until next time stay happy stay healthy and forget to be afraid thanks for sharing this episode of the mental breakdown and psych Ridge podcast be sure to check out the show notes for links to follow us on twitter and subscribe to our youtube channel where you will find all of our previous podcasts and much more We would be honored if you would become a patron through patreon.com, where any donation you can manage will go to the development and creation of more content. Just visit patreon.com slash the mental breakdown for more information. 
Thanks again for listening. Have an awesome day, and we look forward to being back in your feed tomorrow morning.